uh, Swedish meatball casserole? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hamburger Helper. You've already made the neighborhood fun. Make Tang fresh every day for the whole family. The nostalgia might make us smile, but some foods from the 70s are best left in the past. Let's think of bright green salads that jiggled, hot dogs swimming in a suspicious orange cheese sauce, or desserts that looked like they belonged in a science experiment. So yeah, some food trends of that era were more far out than fantastic. With changing taste and a focus on healthier options, these culinary relics remain unwanted reminders of a bygone era. So join us as we dive in for the second time into the 20 worst foods in the 1970s nobody wants back. Number one, shrimp cocktail. Shrimp cocktails might still grace a fancy dinner party today, but the 70s version was a different beat. Back then, they weren't the delicately poached jumbo shrimp we might expect. Picture a giant martini glass filled with a sea of tiny frozen shrimp, their texture more reminiscent of rubber than succulent seafood. This dubious delight was then drowned in a fluorescent pink cocktail sauce, often of the pre-made variety, overflowing with sugar and a one-note hit of vinegar. While the convenience of frozen shrimp and bottled sauce was a hit with busy home cooks, it sacrificed freshness and flavor in the name of ease. The modern take on shrimp cocktail focuses on plump, fresh shrimp and a homemade sauce bursting with fresh herbs and horseradish, making this classic a bit more flavorful. Yet, amid the faded flavors of shrimp cocktail, what other culinary relics, like the humble canned ham, await in the pantry of bygone eras? If you want country-style ham flavor in your next sandwich, or sizzled up with your breakfast eggs, then open up a can of Armour Star Treat. Number two, canned ham. Canned ham was a staple in kitchens, a lifesaver for busy families or those seeking a quick meal. Unlike the carved ham you might associate with the holidays, the canned ham was the baloney of the ham world. This pre-cooked, shelf-stable meat came in a can, often ring-shaped, and boasted of a rosy pink color that would raise eyebrows today. Made with a hefty dose of nitrates and nitrites to preserve it, canned ham had a distinct hammy flavor that wasn't for everyone. Canned ham, once a staple for its convenience, found its way into dishes ranging from cold sandwiches to the divisive ham and pineapple casserole. However, its ease of use came at a cost to both flavor and texture. The advent of more accessible fresh ham options, coupled with a growing preference for less processed foods, has seen canned ham fade into the background, becoming more of an artifact of culinary history than a pantry essential. You can help your hamburger, you can make it a delight. Just smile and say cheeseburger macaroni tonight. Say cheese. Hamburger helper. Say cheese. Help your hamburger. Hamburger helper, help your hamburger. Number three, hamburger helper. Hamburger helper was a champion of convenience in kitchens. This boxed meal solution promised a quick and easy dinner. Just add ground beef to the box and dinner was served. However, unlike the fresh ingredients we favor today, Hamburger Helper was all about speed over quality. These boxes contained a dehydrated medley of pasta, fillers, and artificial flavors. While they boasted cheesy stroganoff or hamburger gravy flavors, the reality was far from homemade. The taste was heavily processed and the texture left much to be desired. Think mushy noodles and a gloopy sauce that relied on artificial flavors to compensate for the lack of fresh ingredients. Thankfully, the rise of fresher and healthier options has pushed Hamburger Helper to the back of the pantry. Today's home cooks have a wider variety of convenient yet flavorful meal solutions. I didn't make dessert. Oh, instead, I made some fun. Number four, Jello salads. Those jiggly concoctions that dominated potlucks might raise a confused eyebrow today. Imagine a vibrant green mold, not of moss, but of lime jello, studded with cubes of mystery meat, canned mandarin oranges, and maybe even some chopped celery. These sweet and savory combinations, held together by wobbly gelatin, were all the rage. But what made them so strange? Firstly, the textures were a clash. Think bouncy, jiggly gelatin fighting with the mushy softness of canned fruit and the rubbery chew of mystery meat. Secondly, the flavors were a gamble. 
sweet lime jello might battle with salty hot dogs, and the whole thing could be the occasional surprise of a stray celery chunk that could throw the entire thing off the face in desserts. The savory jello salad has faded into obscurity. Our palates now crave fresher, more predictable flavor and texture combinations. After the case of jello salads, the curious transformation of powdered milk emerges in front of us. So, what led to these odd palates of the past? Number five, powdered milk. While powdered milk served a purpose, being budget friendly and lasting for ages, the taste and texture left much to be desired. Imagine mixing a white powder with water to create something resembling milk. Though technically milk, the resulting drink lacked the creamy richness and fresh taste we expected. Reconstituted milk often had a thin, waterly mouthfeel, a far cry from the smooth texture of whole milk. The flavor could be flat and sometimes had a slightly chalky aftertaste. Sure, it was a lifesaver for families on a tight budget, but powdered milk needs to measure up compared to today's readily available and affordable fresh milk options. Fuzzy in the morning? How about breakfast with the intense orange taste of tang? Number six, tang. Tang, the orange flavored powdered drink mix, may have rocketed to fame in the 1970s due to its connection to the space program, but its taste might not launch with today's consumers. Sure, it was a convenient way to create a quick beverage, but convenience came at the cost of flavor. The flavor was one-dimensional, a blast of sugary orange with a distinct chemical aftertaste. While Tang might have been a childhood favorite for some, its artificiality doesn't hold up against the plethora of fresh juice and flavored water options we have today. Number seven, fondue. Fondue once stood as a convivial highlight, gathering people around a shared pot for an experience of communal dipping. However, in today's society more attuned to hygiene concerns, multiple individuals dipping into the same pot might prompt a second glance or lead to the reach for hand sanitizer wipes, reflecting a shift in social dining norms. Everyone would gather around, dipping bread cubes on long forks to snag a cheesy bite. While sharing a delicious dip sounds fun, the reality is that it could be messy and unsanitary. Double dipping was a constant worry, and keeping the cheese at the right temperature to avoid burns or cold, stodgy bites was a delicate balance. For those who still crave melted cheese, there are now individual fondue pots, offering a more personal and hygienic approach to this classic dish. While fondue parties might be a thing of the past, the concept of melted cheese for dipping remains a delicious option, just with a little more focus on individual portions these days. While we ponder the evolution of social dining, the futuristic promise of space food sticks fizzles, leaving behind a taste of nostalgia rather than innovation. So, what other gastronomic marvels await our exploration? A-OK -okay space energy sticks from Pet. Mmm, they're chewy and good. And you can take them with you anywhere. Number eight, space food sticks. While they promised a taste of the future of the 1970s, these astronaut-inspired snacks wouldn't win any awards today. Sure, the long, chewy bars wrapped in shiny foil seemed like something straight out of a sci-fi movie, but the reality was less Space Odyssey and more Cardboard Comet. They came in various flavors like chocolate, peanut butter, or caramel, but these were more vague suggestions than actual taste sensations. The focus was on convenience and portability rather than precisely gourmet dining. While the chewy texture might have satisfied a quick sugar craving, it wasn't a delightful eating experience. Gratefully, the world of snack bars has exploded in recent years, offering a variety of delicious, healthy options with exciting flavor combinations and textures that far surpass the novelty of space food sticks. She just takes Swanson TV turkey dinners from the freezing compartment of our refrigerator when I'm a little off schedule. Oh. Number nine, TV dinners. These aluminum tray meals promised a hot meal in minutes, but fire up the nostalgia machine with caution because these dinners wouldn't win any awards for taste today. They were convenient, pop them in the oven, and dinner was served, but convenience came at a cost. The meat was often a mystery protein sculpted into questionable shapes. The vegetables were usually frozen and lost all flavor and texture in the reheating process, and the desserts were a sugary afterthought. Frozen meals have come a long way, 
Today's options offer fresher ingredients, more flavorful sauces, and healthier choices. So while the TV dinner might hold a place in pop culture history, its reign as king of the convenient meal is thankfully over. As we bid farewell to the era of TV dinners, another culinary artifact emerges, Tab Cola, once a pioneer of diet sodas. Tab Cola has a beautiful taste, so good for beautiful people. Tab Cola, beautiful to you and me, cause every can has less than two calories. Number 10, Tab Cola. Tab Cola might not quench your thirst for a refreshing drink today, it was the first Diet Cola for Coca-Cola and a symbol of a health-conscious era, but its taste wasn't exactly a revelation. It was a cola that tasted vaguely like a regular cola, but then took a sharp turn into a territory of artificial sweetness. Unlike the zero sugar options, Tab relied heavily on artificial sweeteners, leaving a distinct aftertaste long after you finish your drink. Although some might find comfort in the familiar pink can, Tab's flavor can't compete with a variety of diet sodas available today. We now have options with subtler sweeteners, a more comprehensive range of flavors, and even some with a hint of natural fruit taste. Number 11, liver and onions. Back then, this dish was a budget-friendly source of protein, but its strong, often metallic flavor and the unique texture of liver can be a tough sell for modern cooks. Let's conceive of a plate piled high with thinly sliced liver, browned and slightly crispy around the edges. Alongside were mountains of caramelized onions, their sweetness a desperate attempt to balance the intense flavor of liver. The key ingredient, the liver itself, had a soft, almost spongy texture that wasn't for everyone. While some found it satisfyingly meaty, others found it off-putting. Though liver is still enjoyed in some cultures, and some butchers even offer a delicately prepared calf's liver, the intense flavors and textures have fallen out of flavor with many home cooks. Many prefer milder meats, focusing on fresh ingredients and lighter sauces. Hence, while liver and onions might hold a nostalgic charm for some, it's likely to remain a dish of the past for most. Oh, I love your fruit cocktail, Mother Nature. I just love it. At Del Monte, Mother Nature is on our side. Number 12, fruit cocktail and heavy syrup. Do you remember those colorful cans of fruit cocktails swimming in a sea of neon syrup? This sweet treat might not tickle taste buds today. Indeed, it offered a quick and easy dessert option, but convenience came at the expense of flavor and freshness. It was like a can overflowing with diced peaches, pears, grapes, and maybe a few cherries, all suspended in a thick sugary syrup that glowed an unnatural shade of red or yellow. After spending who knows how long in a metal can, the fruit lost its natural texture and flavor. Each bite was a mushy, one-note sweetness thanks to the overpowering syrup. While canned fruit cocktails might have satisfied a sugar craving in a pinch, they couldn't compete with fresh fruit's taste and health benefits. Remember the last time you had a bowl of prunes? And how after the prunes were all gone, you drank that sweet, good-tasting juice? Well, that's what this is, only better. Number 13, prune juice. Prune juice might not be your first choice for a refreshing drink today. It was touted for its digestive health benefits, but let's face it, downing a glass wasn't precisely a delightful experience. Let's imagine a dark purple liquid with a thick syrupy consistency. The smell, not exactly fruity or inviting. The taste, it's a powerful reminder of its primary purpose. Although some might have stomached it for the supposed health perks, Prune juice wasn't exactly a thirst quencher. These days, we have a more comprehensive range of options for digestive health. Plus, the focus has shifted towards incorporating more fiber-rich fruits and vegetables into our diets, making prune juice less appealing. While it might still have its place in some households, for most, prune juice is a reminder of a time when taste took a backseat to functionality in the world of beverages. After we sip the memories of prune juice's medicinal past, its syrupy depths a reminder of a bygone era. Cheese balls come forth, which were once the stalwart of party platters. Number 14, cheese balls. While undeniably convenient, these party snacks wouldn't win any awards for flavor or presentation today. The cheese, a blend of prepackaged spreads and shredded varieties, needed more depth and complexity. 
which we now appreciate. The focus was on ease of preparation rather than gourmet ingredients. While a bite might deliver a satisfyingly creamy and salty punch, the one-note flavor profile and sometimes overpowering nuttiness wouldn't hold up to today's cheese plate offerings. We now have a wider variety of cheeses and more exciting accompaniments like artisan crackers, fresh fruit, and cured meats. The cheese balls reign as the king of the party snack has ended, replaced by a more diverse and flavorful grazing experience. Go Ben's Boil and Bag Rice. Just drop a handy bag into boiling water. It cooks itself. Water enters through tiny holes to cook perfect rice in 10 short minutes. Number 15, Boil in Bags. These staples promise dinner in a flash. Just boil the bag and voila. But while convenient, these plastic encased meals wouldn't fly in today's food scene. The boiling process leached any flavor or color from the ingredients leaving a bland, unappetizing pile on your plate. The plastic itself wasn't exactly confidence-inspiring either. Concerns about leaching chemicals and the lack of freshness made boil-in bags a questionable choice, even for busy families. Convenience these days can mean something other than sacrificing flavor or quality. We have a more comprehensive range of quick prep options from pre-cut veggies and pre-marinated meals to frozen meals of fresh ingredients and exciting flavor combinations. So while boil-in bags might have served a purpose in their time, they're a culinary relic best left in the past. America, it's right under your nose. We can sure please you. Sniff, taste, and enjoy Nescafe regular or green label decaffeinated. Number 16, instant coffee. Although indeed offered convenience, a quick spoonful for a cup of joe, the taste left much to be desired for modern coffee aficionados. The granules, brewed with hot water, produced a weak, bitter concoction lacking real coffee's depth and aroma. The flavor was often one-dimensional, relying on bitterness to mask its shortcomings. Indeed, it was a fast way to fix your caffeine, but it couldn't compete with the full-bodied taste and complex flavors we expect from coffee now. The rise of specialty coffee shops and high-quality home brewing options has spoiled our palates for the instant variety. For those who still crave convenience, many instant coffee options are made with higher-quality beans and freeze-drying processes that preserve more flavor. As instant coffee's bitter aftertaste fades, we confront Vienna sausages, once a lunchbox staple. The Snack Lover. Now comes news of a way to get at Armor Star Vienna sausage and potted meat faster. Number 17, Vienna Sausages. Vienna sausages, those tiny canned cylinders of mystery meat, might have been a lunchbox staple in the 1970s, but they wouldn't win any fans today. Their convenience was undeniable. Pop open the can and lunch was ready. But Vienna sausages are a hard sell for modern taste buds accustomed to fresher, higher quality meats. These weren't plump hot dogs or juicy bratwurst. Vienna sausages were a different breed, a mushy, homogeneous blend of processed meat scraps, often encased in a gelatinous casing. The flavor? Well, it wasn't exactly something you'd brag about. A vaguely meaty, salty taste dominated with a hint of artificial smokiness. Nowadays, lunch boxes are filled with fresh fruits, vegetables, and lean protein choices, leaving the questionable delights of Vienna sausages firmly in the 70s. Number 18, Diet Plate. The Diet Plate might sound healthy at first glance. A lean hamburger patty, cottage cheese, and maybe a canned peach. But dig a little deeper and you'll see why this dish wouldn't fly with today's dietitians. Firstly, the lean hamburger patty was often a mystery it was a thin gray disc, more cardboard than juicy beef. It offered little flavor and questionable protein content. The cottage cheese, while a decent source of protein, was often served plain, adding a bland and somewhat chalky element to the plate. It provided sweetness, but the focus was on restricting calories rather than was not well-rounded nutrition. This diet plate lacked essential elements like whole grains, healthy fats, and fresh vegetables. Now, our understanding of healthy eating has evolved. These days, diets emphasize balanced meals with lean protein, complex carbohydrates, healthy fats, and more colorful fruits and vegetables. So, ditch the sad 70s diet place and embrace a more delicious and nutritious approach to healthy eating. 
Unearthing the remnants of the diet plate, the ambrosia salad emerges to the surface, a sugary blend of canned fruit and marshmallows. Number 19. Ambrosia Salad This unique and questionable dessert combines a canned fruit cocktail, miniature marshmallows, and shredded coconut enveloped in a cloud of whipped cream or sour cream. Although it might sound like a kid's dream come true, this dish is a testament to the era's love for unexpected flavor combinations. The canned fruit cocktail, a medley of diced peaches, pears, grapes, and maybe a maraschino cherry, offered a one-note sweetness. The mini and regular marshmallows added a bouncy texture and a touch of vanilla flavor. The shredded coconut, sometimes toasted, brought a tropical touch but could be a bit dry. Finally, the whipped cream or sour cream, depending on the recipe, provided a creamy counterpoint to the sweetness and fruitiness of the other ingredients. Though ambrosia salad might have satisfied a sugar craving back in the day, its appeal has faded. Modern palates tend to favor fresher ingredients and more balanced flavor profiles. Gratefully, the dessert world has become far more diverse, offering a comprehensive range of options beyond canned fruit and whipped cream. And number 20, the pineapple upside down cake. Pineapple upside down cake, a golden beauty with a ring of caramelized pineapple slices, is a timeless dessert classic. But its peak popularity in the 1970s reflects a trend for canned fruit based desserts that might have yet to hit the spot for the modern taste buds seeking fresh and exciting options. Back then, convenience reigned supreme. This cake relied heavily on canned pineapple rings arranged in a sugary glaze at the bottom of the pan. The cake batter, often an essential box mix, was poured over, creating a sweet and slightly artificial pineapple flavor. While the caramelized top offered a satisfyingly gooey texture, the overall taste profile lacked the depth and freshness we expect from desserts today. Imagine taking a bite. The sweetness of the canned pineapple dominates, with the cake itself playing a secondary role. While a nostalgic favorite for some, the reliance on processed fruit and sugary glaze wouldn't hold up against a plate of seasonal berries drizzled with honey or a decadent flourless chocolate cake. Now, the world of desserts has blossomed. Bakers now focus on using fresh, seasonal ingredients, exploring exciting flavor combinations, and balancing sweetness and other elements. So while pineapple upside down cake might still grace a potluck table here and there, its reign as the ultimate dessert hardly waned in the face of a more adventurous and delicious dessert scene.